So in today's video, I'm going to talk about wire. This may sound like a boring subject, but it's actually quite an important thing to understand. Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to do a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. Wire has a resistance. Now wires are designed to actually be optimised to a point. You have to make sure that if you're doing a particular job, you need to have the wire which is suitable for that job especially when it comes to current ratings. I mean, you couldn't use a wire like this, for example, to join two big batteries together because this would just catch fire. It couldn't handle the current, most likely, depending on what you're doing, of course. You'd use something a bit more like this. This is heavier wire. Even this is too small to link two batteries together, really. This is a bit on the small side for that. But I'm going to do some demonstrations showing how much voltage drop you get across a wire. That gives you an indication of how much loss you're going to get through it. Now, if I try to put, say, 5 amps or something through this wire here, the result is going to be much greater voltage drop than you're going to get through this one. And according to Ohm's law, voltage drop with an own current tells you the resistance of the wire. And once you know what the resistance of the wire is, you can also figure out how much power is being dissipated in the wire. That's right, wires can dissipate power. Just like a resistor, the smaller cross-sectional area, the greater the resistance. Now, depending on what your application is, it may not matter if you're just doing a little bit of small bit of digital electronics, you know, just low current stuff. This sort of stuff's probably too big, right? You can get much finer stuff, literally, you know, a strand or two of this. This kind of size, you know, one or two strands of this you could use, even. Depending on what you're doing, if you're just doing some control signals for a microcontroller. Don't need much cross-sectional area at all. This stuff here, I don't know, you could probably run an amp or two through this, maybe. Probably an amp, but it depends on the distance as well. Obviously, because of resistance. You will get a voltage drop through the wire. The resistance of the wire and the length of the wire will determine how big that voltage drop is. Now, in most situations, you probably won't care, but in sometimes you do care about the voltage drop. And this is another reason why, like lines companies, they're using really high voltages, such as like 33,000 volts and stuff like that, or 110,000 volts, or whatever it may be, because for the same power, the current is lower. That means less losses, because it's the current through the cross-sectional area which determines your losses. If you're using a higher voltage, you've got less current. Less current means less power dissipation in the cable. Anyway, let's do a demonstration. So here I am with my test setup. Here's my DC electronic load. This one I'm going to apply a load through the wire with. Here is my signal multimeter, six and a half digit multimeter. So I can measure the voltage drop through the wire with this. So the multimeter is hooked up onto here. This is one cable. And the other end is on the power supply. These are the two wires I'm going to measure. They're hooked up in parallel just here. I'm going to be hooking up individually at each end at the other side. So it's going to measure the voltage drop through whichever wire I'm testing. Up here we've got, see, we've got two cables here. These are in parallel. These both go to the power supply. That's purely to reduce the voltage drop on this leg of the system. Because there will be voltage drop through this side as well as this side. So I've done that just to try and reduce that a little bit so it's less influential from that one. So as you can see I've got 10 volts set. Just to make the maths easy if you do any maths on it. I'm not sure if we will or not, but we probably will. So 10 volts is set. Load is set to 1 amp. So I turn this load on, you'll see what the voltage drop is through the wire. So I turn this on now. So we're getting 83 millivolts drop through this thin orange wire, okay? And you can see the voltage drop here as well. It sort of corresponds. If you notice, there's a difference between these two. If you add that to this one, it doesn't quite add up to 10 volts. That's because we're losing a little bit of voltage through these ones as well, all right? So that difference will be what's being lost through this cable. A little bit variable because I've got a crocodile clip on it holding the other end, so it's a bit changeable. It's not perfect. Not even moving the wire around changes it, okay? 84 millivolts, call it 84 millivolts with one amp. So with that, we can actually do the maths and work out the resistance of the wire. And because I'm doing a one amp loading, right, one amp, this makes it easy. It's easy maths because of that. So we're losing 84 millivolts with one amp, that makes that 84 milli ohms. You got that? So I'm going to change over onto the thicker cable, which is called an 8 gauge, but I'm not quite sure what gauge it actually is. I don't know. Alright, so now I'm on a thicker cable. Let's turn this one on. We should have the same result. And here we're getting 58 millivolts drop. Just play the crocodile clip a little bit, see if we can get anything different. I want to get it down slightly lower there. Just trying to get some better connections. There we go. So, there you go, 50 millivolts, let's call it 50 millivolts. So that's 50 milli ohms resistance. So although this cable was significantly thicker, the actual difference in resistance, not that much. So 84, then 48 now. It's getting down to half, isn't it? It's getting close to half. 
and you can see here the voltage drop here is now 30 millivolts more as well that should be relational to the previous test we did because this one wouldn't have changed make sense let's look at the power aspect of this so I've said before that we're losing power through the wire we know two parts of the equation already we know the current we know the voltage we're dropping and because I'm doing one amp this makes the maths really easy don't forget Ohm's law and the power triangle Ohm's law told us so don't recall on this it's one amp and we're getting 47 millivolts drop so therefore we're getting 47 milli ohms is resistance relational and for power which is PIV which is current times voltage well we got one times 0 0.047 that means the power is also 0 0.047 watts so 47 milliwatts is being dissipated in this cable so now I've changed the current to 4 amps still on a big cable, still on a thick one 8 gauge cable supposedly let's stick it on so we get 9.74 volts so we lost a quarter of a volt at 4 amps we're now losing 188 millivolts across that wire mathematically and also I don't think you're losing some of these cables too because that's the return path that's not unsurprising now I've changed over onto the thin orange cable which is not rated for 4 amps it's probably only like 1 amp rated really okay I'd say maybe 2 amps at most so let's see what happens we put 4 amps through this wire so now getting a significant drop here 9.6 volts at the end here we're losing 290 millivolts which means we're actually dissipating 290 milliwatts in the wire so like this we're basically drawing 38 watts all right so what I'm going to do I'm going to change my setup here and we're going to do this a different way so I've now changed over to being constant power mode which means I can just draw a set amount of power on this load now I'm going to simulate what you would see in like AC main situations it's also isn't exactly the same as I'm doing DC but the principles still apply so if say you've got a distribution system and you want to minimize your losses in that distribution system so we're drawing 40 watts here turn it on it's going to draw 40 watts exactly so it's 4.1 amps okay we're getting that big nearly 300 millivolt drop there so if I increase this voltage from 10 volts up to say 20 volts let's double it so we see we're still drawing 40 watts look what's happened to our losses it's halved Ohm's law. Now if I do that again, I'll go up to 30 volts. There we go. So now 30 volts, still drawing 40 watts. The current's dropped because it's a power relation. It's now gone down some more. And if I go the other way and actually drop it right down to say 5 volts, I'm maxing out my power supply. I can't do that. Hold on. I can't actually draw enough power to generate 40 volts out of this. So I'll put this on, turn the load on that's maxing out my power supply so it's collapsing it's drawing 5 amps max, that's the most my power supply can do so I can't actually demonstrate going to a lower voltage because my power supply can't generate enough power ok so what I'm going to do is change the wattage, I'm going to go down to 20 watts alright do 20 watts instead, that will be equivalent so I'll put this back on 10 volts so you can see what the, the output is doing so I'm outputting now 20 watts and now we're drawing 2 amps 9.8 basically relational so it's halved because I'm using half as much power but now if I go to a lower voltage I get down to 5 volts you'll see I'm still drawing the same power current spiked that's also doubled and if I go all the way up and there's 30 volts still drawing 20 volts and see that that's significantly better so I hope you like that demonstration don't forget to hit like if you did like it and subscribe if you've not already been here before and not already subscribed make sure you do that also consider sharing the video I think other people will be interested in my beginner video series share it share the playlist share the individual videos if you think a particular video is interest to someone it will help my channel it will help other people that's the whole purpose of making these videos to try and help people and improve education a little bit I suppose down there is a thanks button if you want to give me a one-off donation to help support the channel tell me to buy things from Albay, create review videos or buy a bit of test gear to fix and that sort of stuff and if you want to even just show your appreciation Click that thanks button and that will allow you to give me a one off donation if you prefer to do it that way. Patrons get better benefits though, so if you want to become a patron, that's even better. Playlist here for the video series. There's a playlist here on YouTube, things you should watch. There's a link here to subscribe if you haven't already done that, despite me pestering you. And here's the Patreon support link if you think you'd like to donate. Bye.